Tile laying games are some of my favorite games. It's just a mechanism that I find so simple, clean, satisfying. Maybe it's because I also like jigsaw puzzles. I like when all the pieces fit. And Aqua is a game that, well, got me excited when I saw that it has really cool art and this was going to be about laying tiles and creating your personal scoring area that grows over time that, sh that will be populated with these really nice looking tiles super thick production values are very high here and so we're gonna create a an underwater biome starting from this like hot uh, spot hot vent each player will have one at the beginning of the game and then you will shuffle those tiles uh, representing the kind of terrain or resources call it whatever you want that the players will collect during the game then you will draw a number of those equal to the number of players plus one so this would be the set of four four players and one player will have the first player's token and at the beginning of a round they place it there in the middle in the market and then the round is ready to start. Starting from the first player, players can take one of these tiles which they will need to add to their area, we'll talk about that later. Or you can also choose to take the first player's marker instead. And if that is the case, then everybody else chooses their tiles and then you go last. You will always have a choice of at least two because there's always number number of tiles available is always number of players plus one. So you always choose two. And so maybe, you know what? I think that what's left there is good enough for me or nothing is good for me. So I take this one. I have fewer choices this round, but I know that I'll get to go first next round and so that's how the tiles are assigned but then it gets to the all important thing of course so what you do with them again you expand your personal environment when you get a new tile you need to add it to your environment in a way that at least one symbol will match so there would be a legal placement that would obviously not be and so i place it there this time all right that's uh, that's what i've done I've done that right now. And maybe next round, I add this tile right there. If by adding a tile, I'm forming a perfect hexagon, no other things sticking out, then I can add, I must add actually, an animal of the corresponding type. And they're color coded, so this one goes with purple, and I cover that hex like that. Now, as you add tiles, it's also possible that you're forming areas of different shape. In particular, if you have a tile with two of the same kind of environment, they can now possibly be part of a perfect hex. But when you have an area that is at least four of the same kind of environment and not a perfect hexagon, then you form the reef. And that is also very, very good for scoring points. And so I just scored, I just made that refresh. You know what, I'm going to make it a little bit different because uh, I'm going to do this uh, instead. Like so, so I form that, I call that other <clears throat> little animal there. And also I have a nice little reef and that's good because having animals adjacent to a reef will score you points later in the game. Also, placing animals, uh, small animals, next to each other is pretty neat uh, because it may attract larger animals. So, when you're placing a new animal, if you're forming a patter pattern of multiple small animals, all different from one another, you can, don't have to, acquire one of those tiles representing larger animals and matching the shape that you just created. For example, by doing so, I am allowed to take this style. It has different art on each side, but the art is not. Doesn't influence gameplay. The value printed on it does, because that will score me that many points at the end of the game. And uh, incidentally, they're stacked so that the values decrease. So five, then four, then three. And I can place it there. Now, when I added that animal there, I didn't have to take this one. I could have waited longer, and if later I make another, I add another 
animal there then I could choose as I place that one down to take another large animal instead so we increase our environment we enlarge our environment so we attract small animals and small animals attract large animals and that's the general idea and then we score points meaning that once we run out of those tiles and the number changes depending on the number of players so you always have 17 rounds after 17 rounds we're gonna score points so first you remove your large animals and they score the number indicated there nine points simple then you score the points for printed on the small animals pretty simple then for each reef, you score again the small animals adjacent to it. So that reef there scores me three, three, and two. That small reef, remember, four or more of the same kind. And if I had done that, that other reef there also gets me to score those two. And then I can score this one again, if that was. Well, no, yeah, 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 that's it. <laughs> that reef also gets me to score that one. Adjacent only counts if at least an edge is touching, not simply a corner. So large animals, small animals, reefs, and then, and then there are specific scoring. See, these piles where we place the small animals are going to be associated with special scoring tiles. And there is a number of them, so you're never going to use them all in a single game. And the, the, the incentives of what scores change is based on these things. Actually, there's quite a number of scenarios that you can uh, play by uh, using different combinations of these scoring things. For example, and, and, they, and these scoring tiles are associated randomly. So in this, uh, in this game, is a little turtle that is associated with that one. Next game, it may be that that is the case. Anyways, the animal that is adjacent to that scoring tile, if that is in play at all, uh, will score an extra point for each animal adjacent to it, to that type, including itself. These are the ones here that you see uh, showing large animals. They all score the same way, meaning for each tile of that type uh, that, that you have, that you have, you will score that many points, three in that case, for each small animal that type that you have anywhere on the board and the same applies for this one each large animal that I have will be four points for each animal of the associated type that I have and so you see that there will be uh, that's one way <laughs> some of the other scoring things for example if the animal associated with it is adjacent to that one then I score three points uh, if the animal that we're talking about associated with it, I have the most, then it scores seven points. If I have second most, three points, and so on and so forth. A lot of different things that can score if I have at least three of that animal. A lot of different things can score, and so a lot of variety there. So score points from large animals, small animals, reefs, and those uh, tokens there. Player with the high score wins the game. You can play the game solo, then simply you will place out the three, you will draw three tiles each turn. You take one and add it to your personal area, discard the other two, repeat 17 times, and then you check your score and you try to beat your previous score. That's how you play Aqua. I like this game so much. I liked it a lot. I played it solo. I played in multiplayer and I like both versions a lot and they're really not that different because when you play solo well they're just some tiles that you cannot take and the same thing happens of course when you're playing multiplayer um, vastly or entirely outside of your control, meaning it's not the kind of game where when I'm taking my tile, I'm also looking at everybody else's board because I want to make sure that I'm also taking away something you may need. Maybe it happens once or twice, but if somebody does that uh, systematically, that's the way you're going to play, I don't want to play with you because you're just going to slow down the game uh, for everybody, making it unfun. 
and it's not going to give you much of an advantage. If you take tiles from uh, somebody else just to take them, then you're probably not building your own board and you're not going to win. So, uh, it feels when you play it multiplayer, still like a multiplayer solo, which uh, can be very relaxing and nice. Not, not everybody may like that, but now you know the kind of game that this game is. Multiplayer solo with stunning components. I love how they look and how they feel. Very simple rules and very engaging, very nice uh, gameplay. It's an interesting, evolving puzzle in the second half of the game that definitely is a push your luck element as you're hoping for this or that specific thing. I really wanted that animal, but now there is something else. Maybe I can use that half hex that I had built. I built a reef. I may get something else. Of course, the, the opportunities will narrow down toward the end, and that's when the push or luck element comes, but it's not big enough to make the late game uninteresting. It's fun and nice to constantly create in this tableau and evolving and changing it, and there are just so many ways to score. And yes, the different uh, scoring tiles that are variable from game to game will alter strategy significantly. If uh, the animals need to be adjacent to score extra points on top of attracting a specific animals, that's a certain thing. If the reefs are going to score extra points, if a combination of certain animals with certain tiles will score extra points, and so on and so forth. So the general idea is so simple. Take a tile, add it to your personal play area. And I love that of, of, of uh, tile lane games. Maybe just be the version, I guess, that I like the most. You take it and that's it. But there are just so many layers of decision, all personal, pretty much, that emerge from, from that. So I love it solo. I, I started playing it solo. I just kept playing it over and over again. It was extremely addictive when I played it solo. And I tried different scenarios, again, by uh, changing the scoring tiles uh, available each time. Very different experience. I liked the multiplayer. I felt that the game still moved pretty, pretty quickly, pretty smoothly. So I love it. I enjoyed Aqua. It is a great competitive game. The simplicity of the rules is such that you can definitely play with the family. It looks great. It plays great. You can play solo. I don't know what else you can ask for from a game, but I definitely love Aqua.